Christian. This is the emphasis in the passage we have read in Hebrews. Jesus Christ is now our great priest in heaven, and we are able to confidently approach through our prayers to the throne, the room of the Almighty God of the universe. Gano'n ka importante talaga sa atin ang mga nalangin? Kung titignan natin, minsan nga hindi natin talaga ma-enjoy ma 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 o ma-realize yung kahalaga ng pangalangin. Kasi hindi man natin naiisip na in our prayer, we are not asking our boss for salary increase. We are not asking other people to give something that we need. But we are asking the most high God. Sa isang kumpanya nga, pag malaki kumpanya mo, ang hirap puntahan ng presidente. Ang sadyang mo, pag malaki ang kumpanya nyo, ang hirap puntahan ng sadyang. Kung meron kang kailangan. Tama ba? Amen. Marami kang dadaanan eh. E sino ba mas mataas yung boss mo, yung sadyang mo, o yung presidente, o ang Panginoon? Look, how humble God, how God humbled Himself to us that He is the most highest authority in our lives. And yet, siya ito yung pinakamadaling lapitan. Paano sa pamagitan ng pananalangin? Sa pamagitan ng pananalangin, siya na yung pinakamataas ha? na authority. Sa kanya nang galing ang lahat ng authority na sinusunod natin ngayon. Pero yung katotohanan, siya pa yung pinakamadaling lapitan. Why? Because all we need. Now that we are children of God, all we need is to open our hearts and say the things that we need to pray to God. This is the reason why Jesus himself had spent time teaching his disciples how to pray. Kung natandaan natin sa Gospel, sa Matthew, sa Matthew or Mateo, sabi niya, the Lord teaches how to pray. Makalungkot, no? Sila ng mga Hudyo ay humingi ng ng tulong sa Panginoon, tuluan mo kami. Jesus wants, uh, Jesus wants uh, all of us to utilize what He has provided for us. We have three truths we need to take at heart. Number one, the basis of our prayer is our relationship to God. Our relationship to God. We all know that lahat tayo ay naniganap ng Diyos. Kaya naman, uh, alam nyo, uh, whenever somebody is praying, ang lagi kong tinitingnan yung, yung unang salita. Lagi kong pinapakinggan yun. Kasi it will, it will define him, it will define his relationship to his God. Kung ano yung mga unang salita na binabanggit natin, ito yung magpapabadalas ang sinasabi natin. Ah, Panginoon Diyos, our Almighty God. Pero the sweetest word that we can really say in our prayer is saying our Father. Ama namin Diyos. Why? It really connects you to God na iyong relasyon sa Panginoon. These words immediately puts emphasis on the relationship that we believers have gained after receiving Jesus Christ as their Savior. Remember the words in John, alam po natin lahat yung nawala yung John. Ayun ba? Nawala. John 1, 12 for all, those who receive and believe in Him, He has given Him the right to become the children of Oh, God. Meron ba dyan? Oh, God. Hindi ko na isama. Okay. Somehow, this is also the reason why we need to consider the Lord's Prayer simply as a model prayer and that the prayer we have to constantly repeat. When you analyze the text, Jesus said, Did not say, Then this then is your prayer. Instead, He said, This then is how you should pray. He was explicitly giving them a model for to base their prayers, not a prayer they need to recite. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 7, eight, beside muna natin, And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. The word babbling suggests speaking without thinking. God our Father does not enjoy communing with us if we are really reciting words we don't mean or sometimes don't feel. Prayer is our way to cultivate our relationship with Him. As a disciple, as a follower of Christ, prayer is really important in building up our relationship with God. Our prayer is very important. Why? Why? Tignan nyo, maraming wala ngayon. 
Can I ask a question? Did we pray for them this week? Did we pray for them? Parang ina sa atin, we pray. Pero the way we react today, parang hindi na tayo nag-pray para sa kanila. Ang isang, if you will listen to the, the, the message of Pastor Tanchi, is that yung kanyang confident that many people are praying for him. Pa, paano ba tayo talaga mag-pray? This lesson are for new Christians. Kung mga binabangal na pin, what, what, what challenge can I give you today? How much time do you spend praying for the leader of the church, for your pastor, for the member of the church, and for those people who come into this church? Kaya nga sa journaling natin, ako na, like to look at brother and sister Gary, sister Sherry, is that every week, meron tayong group of people na pinag-pray. Eventually, dapat kasama yan sa ating journaling. Kung sino-sino yan. This week, sino yung pag-pray? This day, sino yung pag-pray ko? Monday, Tuesday, sino? Wednesday, sino? Thursday, sino? Friday, sino? So that we can, we will not be, we will not be forgetting those people na kailangan natin yung pray. As we grow in reading our Bible in journaling, praying is very important. Praying is not only important so that we can ask what we need. We need also to learn how to pray for other people, especially those people na kasama natin sa church. Especially to those people na alam natin wala pa sa Panginoon. <coughs> what are the barriers? Bakit nga ba minsan ang panadalangin natin ay hindi tinutugon? Our Father, verse 9, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. That important aspect in the modern prayer can be found in the words, Hallowed be your name. Ano sa Tagalog ito? Sambani. No? Sambani ng ngalan mo. Mapasamin ng iyong karihan dito sa lubagay ng salangit. We can see two possible barriers to an effective prayer experience. And holy life, Hallowed be your name. To hallow means to set apart as holy. For Jews' names are usually descriptive of one character. To hallow God's name is equal to being respectful the holy character of God. We cannot just throw ourselves to God without being sensitive of His holiness. Whenever we approach Him, we must see to it that we have confessed our sin and are maintaining an obedient relationship with our Father. Every Sunday, kinakanta natin yung siya sa atin mo. What is the purpose? Bakit po natin nilalagay ito? So that question ko nga, because you know, bago ko itagang yun eh. Have we spent time this morning in prayer? Parami sa atin, we fail on that. Kasi busy na tayo sa pagpunta sa church. At kung hindi tayo nakapag... Uh, last week, nag, uh, nagsasobya ni na Brother Jen, ang isa mga topic namin ay yung feeling of the Holy Spirit. Bakit nga ba minsan dry ang ating worship? Dry ang ating pakikinig at ating pagsamba? Why? Because we fail to spend time in reading the Word of God and praying. Kaya, yung time na ating pag-awit ng siya sa atin mo is also a time enabled for us to reflect how the how does God sees us on this particular day, especially Sunday. We cannot just throw ourselves to God without sensitive of His holiness. In Psalm chapter 66, verse 18, If I have truly seen in my heart, the Lord will not have listened to me. Kakalukot, no? Isa sa mga hurting sa isang Pasko, kahit sino mga Pasko, sabi ko na, nangyari na rin ito, doon sa aming ito, sabi ni Pasko, meron kami yung worship leader. Ang gano'n sa tabaw, kaya, dumating naman, dumanta, ang patog ko, pagkatapos yung tukutok, bumi na. How does God will feel that kind of attitude? Hindi ka nagpunta, para itong mag-tig na, this is not your job, this is not your just a responsibility. You must worship God, kailangan magbigay ang buong puso mo sa Kanya. Hindi ka natin makikita yung ating paglato sa Panginoon that we do not go to church because of our responsibility sa Iglesia. 
we go to church because we would like to worship God. Wala lang hayo sa pwede ating gawin sa araw na ito, but to worship God. To give. Kaya nga, nakakalungkot kapag ang tingin natin sa ministry natin ay responsibility. Nakawala na yung pag-ibig mo ito sa Panginoon. Even in prayer, kung hindi natin ito maukunawaan, we will fail to understand how important prayer in our Christian life and in our relationship with the Lord. In Isaiah 59 verse 1, to Surely the arm of the Lord is not too sure to say, nor is here to dull to hear, but your iniquities have separated you from your God, your sins have hidden His face from you. Anong kasalanan ba pwede pa namin gawin? Siguro sa atin na hindi na tayo katulad ng mga bagong Kristiyano. Padalas ang kasalanan na ginagawa natin is yung tinatawag natin yung seed of commission. Hindi na seed of commission eh. Hindi tayo nagiging, no, yung lahat ng bawal ay hindi natin ginagawa ngayon. Marami nang naalis sa sarili natin. Anong kasalanan ng isang Kristiyano? Ang kasalanan natin ngayon ay kung ano ang ang alam natin na ang pa rin natin ginagawa. Tama ba na mag-devotion tayo, magbasa tayo ng Bible? Yes. Tama ba na manalangin tayo para sa mga kaluluwa, sa ibang tao? Yes. Eh hindi natin ginagawa. How do you feel those things? Do you feel yourself that is sin against God? We are too busy para hindi magawa kung ano ang kalooban ng Diyos. And yet, ang sabi ng Panginoon, the Lord will not have listened to me. Is God really listening to us today? Your sins have hidden His face 